you're here. Hey, good morning, Rocky. Come on and stand. We worship a God that's faithful no matter what you're walking through. He invites you into his presence. So come on, let's sing this together. I'm calling on the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses Always sing it with us this morning. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Yeah. 
Blessed are the people that have no hope. So if you feel hopeless, if, if that feels a little bit intimidating, everything we just sang, if you don't have anything to bring, Jesus welcomes you into his presence. He's the same God as, as he was when he delivered that talk back then. So come on, we sing in confidence in his presence. We sing, bless God. Bless God, sanctuary. Bless God, fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley, every chance I get, I'll bless your name. Bless God, my hands are empty. Bless God, praise that cost me. Bless God when nobody's watching, every chance I get, I'll bless your name. Bless God when the weapons for me. Bless God when the walls are falling. Bless God cause he goes before me. Every chance I get, I bless your name. Bless God for He holds the victory. Bless God for He's always with me. Bless God for He's always worthy. Every chance I get, I bless your name. And every chance I get, I bless your name.
death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse is blood at its own. One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to be shaken And the veil was made What sacrifice was made Is a living
in church. Isn't that good today? Man, it's good to worship. I love that. It's so good to have you all here. I love that we get to do this. I love that we get to worship like this too. Make Jesus famous to say, you are our king today, Jesus. You guys can go ahead and have a seat where you're at. So this past Friday night was our Shine Prom event that we do every single year. Yeah, man. You guys are ready to go today. I love it. And Shine Prom is amazing. If you don't know, it's a prom that we put on for people in our community with special needs. And it's an incredible thing. And we had a ton of guests, a ton of volunteers. It was awesome. Matt will tell you a little bit more about it here in just a few minutes. But one of my favorite things about Shine Prom is towards the end of the night, you know, it's a huge dance party. We're having a blast. We get to crown every single guest as the king and queen of the prom. And you know, that's something that happens at proms. And we are just saying, you are so valuable. Each and every one of you is the king and queen of this prom today. And you know, it's this special moment where we count it down and all the buddies of the guests, you know, they put the crown and the tiara on their guests. And it just turns into this magical moment. It's an incredible thing where we get to value our guests and honor them in a huge way. And I was just thinking about it though. And I was like, how silly, just go with me for a second. How silly would it be if in that moment we're counting down like three, two, one to crown the guests and the buddy just took the crown and put it on their own head. Okay, yeah, it'd be like, what are we doing? This is like, we said throughout the night, you know, to our volunteers, it's like, hey, this is not about us. This is about our guests, you know, to honor them. So what if the buddy just took it and put it on their own head? Everybody would be like, what is happening? Why, why are you doing this? And the reality, and I'll just speak for myself, is too many times in my life, I'm, you know, going throughout my life, and when I should be putting the crown on Jesus' head, I put it on my own head. And I say, I can do this better. I'm capable of figuring this out on my own. And what I'm actually saying is, Jesus, I don't need you in my life. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. But when you talk about it in the shine prom, you know, thing, it sounds silly. Then you flip it to Jesus and all of a sudden it's like, Eesh, man, I've got some work to do. Because Jesus is the one who deserves the crown. Jesus is the one who our focus should be on. We just sang about it, all hail King Jesus, and we're belting it out. You guys sound amazing today, by the way. And it's this incredible thing, and I'm, you know, talking to myself again, so many times I just put the crown on my own head. And I think coming and gathering like this, worshiping like this, is a reminder to us that the crown stays on Jesus' head. He is the king today. Yeah. So as, as we take communion today, as you take the bread and the juice, you grabbed it when you walked in. If you're online with us, grab whatever you have around you. As you take that today, let's make sure that we're putting the crown on Jesus, that he is our focus because he is the one who died and took on the sins of the world. He is the one who rose and is alive today. So let's take communion. Let's focus our attention on Jesus. Let's make him the king today. When you're ready, take the bread and the juice. Focus your attention on him. praise you today. We worship you for being our king. God, forgive us when we think that we are the kings and queens. God, when we try to wear the crown. Jesus, we thank you so much for what you are doing in our lives, for what you have done in our lives. 
God, that today we have victory in you, regardless of our past, regardless of the things we have done, regardless of the things going on in our life. God, when we look to you as king, we have victory. So God, we surrender to you today. We love you, Jesus. It's in your holy and powerful name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Hope everybody's doing well. Good to be with you this morning. If you don't know me, my name is Matt. I'm a lead pastor here at Rocky. I want to welcome our guests who are in the room. Also want to welcome our guests who are hanging out with us online. I've run into so many people over the last couple of months whose first experience with us uh, is, through, is through a computer or, or TV. So anyways, if you're hanging out with us online, we're, we're thankful that you're choosing to spend an hour of your Sunday morning with us right before you get into another Broncos loss today. Okay, so anyway, um, thanks for being at church. <laughs> thanks for being at church. Okay, hey, two, two quick things before uh, we get into uh, the message uh, here at Fred. Dane talked about it just a little bit, but I just want to celebrate this as a church because on Friday night we had our Shine Prom at both of our campuses, okay? Had about 230 guests, people in our community with special needs, and we partied, okay? We partied at both of our campuses. And as I've jumped into uh, this new role, I had the opportunity, because I've always been at Fred Campus the last six years for our Shine Prom, but spent the first half over at Niwot. So much energy. I'm just telling you so many volunteers that were jumping in. Then I finished out the party here at Fred. And again, just the dance party here was incredible. So I just want to tell you from my point of view, okay, just kind of watching our church, I, man, there's just something special about that night. And the reason why we're able to do that is because so many of you are engaged with our church. You give not just your time, but also your, your, your money. And we're able to do things like that. So can we just celebrate that together as a church this morning? I loved it. I loved it. loved it. I'm telling you. There are so many wins and so many stories that happened that night that we will never, we will never be able to know or see or hear all the things that God did. But I'm telling you, uh, God was doing some stuff. Okay, so anyways, I just thought that was great. Now, second thing, next week, all right, parents, where are you? Make some noise, parents. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, kids are back in school. You got a little more energy. That's great. Okay, next week, okay, we're starting a brand new series entitled Parenting is Easy. Okay, which no one has said ever. Okay, it's not true. So we're having a little bit of fun. We're going to take a couple weeks, and here's our here's our goal. Here's what we're hoping for from a teaching standpoint, because we know that parenting is is complex, especially you know in the world that we live today. And so we want to get back to the basics. We want to simplify. We want to talk about you know the most important things when it comes to parenting. And for those of you in the room who aren't parents, or or you know your kids are you know grown, they're out of house, whatever, and you're like, great, I don't have to go to church for the next month. Wrong. Okay, you still need to come to church because there's so many things in the midst of this conversation that will be applicable to you, whether you are a parent or not, okay? But I just want to let you know we're going to be talking about parenting, and if you've got some friends or, you know, potentially some, some other family members who are parents who, you know, don't go to church or haven't been to church in a long time, this series, I'm telling you, this series would be a great series because we're going to be in the midst of, you know, this spiritual conversation uh, when it comes to parenting, but also a very practical one. So if you want to throw out an invitation, we're going to be talking about the power of invitation today. This series would be a great series, and I, I hope you'll be there. We're going to have a lot of fun together, right? Today we're going to finish up our series entitled Relational Poverty. We've been in, in this conversation the last couple of weeks. Our campus pastors uh, taught last week. They did a great job. Ben Foote two weeks ago. All those guys did a great job leading us in this discussion, and we're going to close it out today because here's what we know, right? This is why we're talking about you know, this topic, and oftentimes when we talk about poverty, we, we're thinking about money. We're thinking about wealth. We're Thinking about, you know, the number in the bank account or the car you drive or the house you live in. But when it comes to the culture and the time in which that, that you and I are living right now in the history of the world, when it comes to relationship, all the studies say the same thing. We are poor. We are very, very poor. In fact, some people have, have called, like, you know, what we're doing right now, you know, th this time of history, the age of isolation, in a world where seemingly, I mean, you can be connected, you know, through technology and you can text and you can do, you know, social media. You know, there's all these tools that are supposedly, you know, to be helping us foster and develop community. Again, the numbers just keep saying over and over again that just about all of us are cheating when it comes to our, you know, our, our relational depth. And we don't always find it out until potentially it's too 
late. And so we've been talking as a church, you know, you know, Jesus, I mean, God himself, the creator of all things, he has, he has created us in such a way that there's something inside of you. And if you're, if you're hanging out with us this morning, you're not a Christian, you just know this, this is true, okay? We all have this in common. There is something inside of us, whether we want to admit it or not, that we desire to be known. There's something in us that just wants to be known. And we say this around here all the time, man, you have to put yourself in, in community or situations or relationships where you allow yourself to be known and in turn get to know other people. That's community. This is where God does some of his best work. And yet many of us, many of us will cheat that. And the trap is that we think we're relationally strong only to come to find out when life gets a little tough, we we actually are very poor. And Christian or not this morning, we all have this in common. We all have this in common. That right now, most of us aren't doing well when it comes to our relationships or community or what Ben talked about, like authentic community. Now, here's the cool thing. The church, the church is supposed to be known by how we love one another. We're supposed to be known by this movement, you know, this community that we have together. And so I was thinking this week, man, if the church, you know, if the church is, you know, if everybody in the world is essentially, you know, lonelier than we've ever been in the history of the world, and the church is supposed to be known by how we love and know one another, wouldn't you think that more unchurched people would come to church? And so I was even thinking this week, I wonder why, you know, just, this is what pastors think about sometimes, but I wonder why, you know, th- this morning that, that between both of our campuses, we've, we've still got some empty seats. If the world is so lonely, then why wouldn't they come and check out what, what we're doing here? Because we're supposed to be known by, by, again, how we love and how we serve and how we get to know one another. From a you know, in even, you know, uh, you know, in evangelism, or, or that's a churchy word, but this idea, you know, how, how the church over the, at least my lifetime has interacted with people who don't know God, okay? How, how are we leaning in, or how are we getting to know, or, you know, how are we loving and serving people who don't know God? It's been interesting in, in my lifetime. I'm, I'm 40 years old, but, you know, the, the evangelism strategy when I was growing up, I've said this before on stage, I think it was weird and creepy, okay? We were, you know, I grew up in this church where evangelism, the pastor would get up there and say, okay, this week, you know, get out there and go knock on some doors, you know? Go do that deal or go stand outside of Walmart and when they walk out, ask the people coming out of Walmart, do you know where you're gonna go when you die? And they're like, no. And they're like, well, let me tell you about Jesus, okay? And so that was just kind of the, the approach to evangelism and then, you know, eventually, you know, you should come to our church and I've even experienced that and even here and other places where people People are knocking on our door and they're like, do you know God? I'm like, you're weird, dude. I do know God, but you're weird, okay? And I just like, to, I'm like, does this work? Does this still work? You know, because every door here in Colorado says no soliciting on it, okay? So anyways, I'm just like, does that even work? All right, so then eventually, you know, in my lifetime, we could just talk about my lifetime, eventually, you know, evangelism got to a place where we said, you know what? You know what? We've got a lot of freedom, and how we gather and how church kind of looks and sounds. And as long as we keep the most important thing, the most important thing. And so then, like mid-2000s, it was like cool church. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, church started creating this environment that, that you could engage with a little bit more. Because, you know, potentially when people thought of church, it was, you know, maybe small. And it was, you know, turn to him 555, sing verses 1, 2, and 4. And the pastor's up there in his, in his suit. You know what I mean? I could never get away with what I'm wearing this morning at the church I grew up in. But, you know, it's just, you know, it just maybe felt a little cold or, uh, you know, a little stuffy. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's this strategy of, go, no, let's create environments that are relevant. And, you know, let's get some, no more pews. Let's get seats that are a little more comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Let's get some light and let's leverage technology and all of a sudden you know cool church is happening so people are like oh, i'm gonna check that out you know because and all of a sudden you know we have people that don't know god are coming to church and and yet here's what the numbers say that cool church isn't that cool anymore when you go and talk to people who don't know god they're going i don't really care about that you know I, you know it, be, it was cool and it was new but then when every church is cool all of a sudden it's not cool to be cool anymore you know in Gen Z right now, that's the, that is statistically the loneliest generation, you know, that's, that's ever lived. All the studies, here's what they say, okay? I'm just, I'm just telling you, okay? Gen Z, here's what, here's what they say, that they're looking for hope over hype. Ah, you know, there's all this hype, you know, no, no, no. I want you to give me some hope. If I come to your church, how am I going to feel when I walk out? 
The loneliest generation in the world, they're looking for hope over hype. Here's the second thing they're looking for. They're looking for real. They're looking for real over rehearsed. They want to know it's real. Now, I get it. You know, there's a little polishing that goes on. You know, we prepare messages, and we've got a great band. And, you know, I, weren't they rocking this morning? I mean, they're just... Look, that... That takes some preparation, okay? And so I totally get it, but there's, you know, the loneliest generation in the world right now, they're saying, no, 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 we want something real. We want something real. And if they sniff out that there's anything fake, you know, they don't want anything to do with it. And then the third thing is kind of a combination of all of it, but they're looking for authenticity over performance. They just want to know, you know? They're kind of saying to the church, ah, come on, we're not impressed anymore with your, you know, your flashy lights and and whatever your environments, whatever they look like. We want to know that your message is potentially going to help us and hopefully it's real. But we're not impressed, you know. And, 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 And here's the thing, okay, when you, again, when you start looking at all the studies, here's... Here's essentially what, what you're finding now, that in an age of isolation, cool is no longer king, community is king. Community is king. And I just think, man, what an opportunity for the local church right now, you know, in the context of where we live, you know, you know like right here in Colorado in our neighborhoods and all that, but just in the context of history, we are living in a time when the greatest opportunity for outreach is going to be fostered through loving and serving one another. That the people who know nothing about God, they're actually very interested about how we are living and serving and engaging with one another. And they want to know if it's real. And they want to know if it's authentic. And they want to know if it helps. And they want to know if potentially it could help, help them. Authenticity, okay? Authentic community. This is what Ben talked about a couple weeks ago. He did a great job. Authentic community is the new cool. This is the question for every local church. This is what every local church has to lean into right now because you can create an amazing environment and you can have great preaching and you can have great worship and you can have the nicest chairs and you can have the nicest facilities and you can have the best children's ministry and you can have the best coffee and you can just be the best, the best, the best, the best. But if it, but if it isn't real and if it isn't authentic, then here's what the numbers say. The unchurched people in our communities are not going to show up. And the biggest reason, now this is very interesting, okay? The biggest reason, this is what all the numbers say, the biggest reasons why they won't show up. Do you know what it, why, what it is? This is very interesting. I would not have said this, but you know why most unchurched people in our community are never going to come to our church? Here's why. Because you don't invite them. This is what all the numbers say. This is what all the say. It's very interesting. We'll get into it just for a sec. But I, I just learned about the power, or just reminded again about the power of invitation over the last couple of weeks. Being invited, there's something so powerful about that. My, my family, we went on vacation, went to a Hawaii two weeks ago. And uh, anybody been to Hawaii? Yeah. Not many, you know, because it's far and expensive. Okay, so anyways... But our family, we just said, okay, we're not going on vac- vacay for two years, and we're going to do this big vacation. But a, a couple of years ago, Amanda Warabaugh, who's our executive pastor, and her husband, Dee, they invited us, okay? They kind of had the, the hookup for some housing in Hawaii. So they invited us, and they said, hey, would you like to come to Hawaii? And um, great invitation, and it would save you some bucks. And, and, um, and we didn't go. First time they invited us, we said, no, you know, we can't do it because, you know, it's the wrong time of the year. And we, or, you know, we've got a million kids at home, and what are we going to do with them? Or, you know, it's just too much money, whatever. So we said no. And then the next year, they were very gracious and said, hey, would you like to go to Hawaii with us? And we were like, nah, we can't do it. Okay, same excuses. We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. And, um, you know, they start taking it personal. Like, do they even like us? You know, they never, you know, there's... Who doesn't want to go to Hawaii, okay? But we didn't know what we didn't know. And so then the beginning of this year, they said, hey, we're just trying again. You know, would you, we just like to invite you guys. You can bring your whole fam. Do you want to go? And so we decided, okay, this year we're, we're going to go. We're going to push through. We saved the money. We have the time. And so we're going to go to Hawaii. And um, when we were there on the trip, you know, Amanda would say several times, like, did we hype it too much? You know, was it, is this kind of what you expected? And I'm just telling you, it was way better than we expected. It was so incredible. My wife, who's a photographer she was taking all of these photos I just want to show you one photo because we got to yeah you see that 
You're like, that's way better than here. It is, okay? It's way better than here. All right? And so she was going around doing sunset, you know, pictures and sunrise pictures. And just, we didn't know, okay? And you can even see photos, but I'm just telling you, when you're there, it's just incredible some of the things that, that you can see. And in fact, you know, we're already thinking about how we can get back there again. So if you want to buy this photo, you can, okay? <laughs> For, we're starting a fund today and help Cody's go to Kauai, okay? So anyways... Um, it was just awesome. But while we were there during the week, okay, middle of the week, um, Dean, Amanda, they've been there so many times. They've, it's really cool. They've developed relationships with people who live on the island. And so we got to meet like some of their friends. And one of their friends, her name is Crystal, and she's a, a waitress down at, at, this, uh, at this restaurant. And so w- middle of the week, they, they were chatting with her. And so they were going to go see her. And it was karaoke night. And um, I don't do karaoke, okay? So... It was karaoke night, and it was un- kind of unplanned. We were supposed to have dinner at the house, but uh, Amanda said, hey, we're going to go down because we want to hang out with Crystal. And just, you know, you don't have to go if you don't want to, but you're invited. You're invited. You can come with us. We'd love for you to meet Crystal. Now, I'll just tell you, here in Colorado, if you invite me to karaoke, I will always say no, I'm not going with you to karaoke, okay? But we're in Hawaii, and it's vacation, you know, and I'd like to meet your friends, so... Okay, let's go. You know, we're in. So we go down to the, you know, the, the karaoke room down in Honolulu Bay, and we get in there. And I don't know how to explain this, but the best karaoke singers in the world were there that night, okay? So I was invited, and I'm welcomed, you know, and I'm there, and the room's starting to fill up. And I mean, just best singer after best singer, all genres of music. D's up there. He's doing country. They love him. Ah, you're the best, you know. And then there's other people doing, like, Frank Sinatra stuff, and they're loving it. And people, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And I'm sitting there, and I go, hey, here's what I'm thinking. I feel very welcomed here, but I don't belong here. Okay, that's how I'm starting to feel. And Amanda's looking at me like, you should go sing. And I'm like, shut up. You know, I don't, (laughs) what? You know, these are amazing singers, okay? And if I get up there and I start singing, I know what's going to happen. They're going to boo me right out of here. I know, there's no way, you know, I'm not going, they're like, come on, come on. I'm like, no. Also, you know, all the songs I know are rap songs and I don't know, you know, and so, and, and they just kept looking at me going, how uncomfortable are you right now? I'm like, very, okay, all I want to do is get out of this room, I, you know, these people seem great, and I seem like they welcome me, but I don't belong, and then something happened, I'll never forget it, okay, I'm sitting there, and then we've been doing karaoke, you know, for like an hour and a half, and a guy goes up there, and he starts singing this song, and he is horrible, can't sing, offbeat, I mean, he's, he's like mumbling, and I'm just, and here's what I'm thinking, as, as a newbie, you know, to karaoke, because I haven't been invited to many of these karaoke things, I'm sitting there going, I'm so curious what this room's going to do with him, because we just had Frank Sinatra up there, and now we got you, you know, and this is, this is very different, he's up there, and he's just bombing, he's bombing and bombing and bombing, and then he gets to the chorus, I didn't know this, but there's certain potentially karaoke songs, like everybody knows, I don't know this, because I don't go to karaoke, and so, you know, uh, all of a sudden we get to the chorus, and that room goes nuts, that room starts singing at the top of their lungs, and here's two thoughts, one, I just started laughing, like, of course, okay, of course, this dude knows he can't sing, but he picked the right song, and so everyone's going nuts, and then all of a sudden, here's how I felt, oh, maybe it is okay that I'm here, I began to think, if that guy, I mean, if they didn't boo him off stage, I mean, maybe I could, I could stay here. So here's what I want to do this morning, because I'm just, I want to relive the moment a little bit with you. Um, I'm going to sing some karaoke, okay? Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Just wait a second. Let me set it up. Let me set it up. Because if you leave me hanging, I'm moving to Kauai, Okay? So I'm going to get into the verse. I'm going to butcher the verse a little bit. We're going to be in verse two. I'm going to butcher it a little bit. And then we're going to get, going to, get to the chorus. And I want, come on. If you're at home, come on. And just go for it with me. Okay? Do you, you understand what I'm saying? If you're unchurched in the room, you're like, what kind of church is this? We sing karaoke here. <laughs> All right? Okay. Well, let's see what, what happens here. Okay. Hit it. Come on. Let's do this. Okay? Now just wait till we... Okay. 
thought just having a friend could be no crime Cause I have friends, and that's a fact Like Agnes, Agatha, Jermaine, and Jack Forget about that Let's go into the story about a girl named Blah, 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 that adore me So we started talking, getting familiar Spending a lot of time so we can build a relationship or some understanding how's it gonna be in the future he was planning everything sounded so dandy and sweet i had no idea i was in for a treat after this was established everything was cool the tour was over and she went back to school i called every day to see how she was doing every time that i called her it seemed something was brewing i called her room a guy picked up but then i called again i say yo who was that oh he's just a friend don't give me that don't even give me that just because it's you come on you got what I yeah see this feels good did you say he's just a friend you've been to karaoke he's just a friend oh baby you you got what I need but you say he's just a friend but you say he's just a friend oh baby. yeah you got what I need but you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Okay, so that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 Now, <laughs> I'm so over time. Okay, so, anyways, um, I was reminded of a very important lesson. And here's what I was reminded of. When I was sitting there in karaoke and I was watching this guy bomb, and then watching everybody jump in to the chorus, I had this thought, because I've been going to church my whole life, okay? And here's what I thought. I wonder if this is what it's like to have never been in church, to walk into church and go, I feel welcomed. I don't know if I belong. I don't know the songs. I don't know the lyrics. I don't know this communion thing. I don't know... If I actually belong here. Cool, cool vibe, you know. But don't ask me to do anything. <laughs> don't ask me to give anything. You know what I'm saying? What a great opportunity we have as a church. Here's what all the, you know, all the numbers say about invitations. And, I, and then we're going to talk about Jesus for a couple minutes, okay? Here's what all the numbers say, okay? Eight out of ten. This is very interesting. This is a brand new study. They did this last year. Eight out of ten people will say yes to a personal invite to church. Isn't that wild? And do you wanna know why? Because they feel the same thing you and I feel. That when it comes to relationships, we know there's gotta be more. And unchurched people are willing to take the risk, potentially more than ever, to go and see if it's real. Eight out of 10 would go, yeah, I'll go. I've never been to karaoke in my life, but I'll go. I've never been to church in my life, but pfft. I'll go eight out of 10. Now look at this second, look at this second stat. Seven out of 10 unchurched people have never been invited to church. Eight out of 10 would go, I would go. And seven out of 10 go, no one's ever asked. I don't even know if I like karaoke. You know, no one's ever invited me. And then here's the third thing. Rocky, this is what we've got to change. Only 2%, only 2% of church members have invited an unchurched person in the church. We are living in a day and age when our world is going, we are looking for something and the church goes, we actually have what you're looking for. And the world's saying, we would go. We just don't know if we belong. They're just waiting for an invitation. So I wanna give you this morning the easiest invitation that you could offer somebody in our community who doesn't know if they're welcome here. John chapter 1, this is Jesus, so simple yet so profound, the power, the power of invitation. John chapter 1, look what it says, verse 35, the next day, this is Jesus, okay, Jesus walking around, he's starting to recruit his guys. The next day, John, this is John the Baptist, was there again with two of his disciples, and when he saw, when John saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God, points him right out, look, this is, this is who we've been talking about, this is who we've been waiting for. And when the two disciples, these guys who were following John for, several, you know, for, for some time, heard him say this, they followed Jesus. 
look, there's Jesus. And two of his disciples go, oh, that's who, you know, John's been talking about this guy. So they leave John. They start following Jesus. Now look what Jesus says, verse 38. Turning around, Jesus saw them. So Jesus sees them following and asked, what do you want? We don't actually know his tone here, okay? It wasn't like, what do you guys want? Or what do you want? I don't know, okay? But they, he asked them, okay, what do you guys want? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Translation, we just want to hang out with you. We like to spend some time with you because John's been talking about you. And then he pointed you out. And then we, we went. Now, now here's, okay, here's kind of the, the, the easiest, you know, invitation. Verse 39, Jesus leads it and then the disciples will follow. Look, look, look what he says here. He says, come, he replied, and you will see. Come and see. So easy. That's the invitation. Hey, could we hang out with you? You know, where are you going? Yeah, just come and see. Where are you going? You know, what are you up to? Just, you know, come, come and see. And so they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him, and it was about four in the afternoon. Come and see. Hey, we're curious. Yeah, you should just come and see. Just come and see. You'll, you'll find out. Okay, keeps going. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two. Okay, so now we're getting a little more into the story. He was one of the two guys who had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. And look what he does. Okay, he just saw Jesus spend, you know, the afternoon with them. They're talking. They're cutting it up. And then what does he do? The first thing, the first thing Andrew did was to find his, to find his brother Simon and what? Tell him. Of course you would tell him. You just hung out with Jesus. You've been waiting, you know, to meet him, to see him. So you go, you know, you go and you tell your brother, look, I, I, I found Jesus and I, I hung out with him for the afternoon. And, and we have found the Messiah that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Come on, you got to come and see him because I was hanging out with him. It was incredible. So come on, you got to come and see, you got to come and see, you got to come and see. Of course. Of course this is what you do. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the son of God, and if you this morning believe that he died and came back for, you know, to, to save you from your sins, he comes back from dead, wouldn't you do the same thing? Of course, come on. This guy, I mean, he has the potential to change my life and change the world. He keeps going. The next day, okay, the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee, finding Philip. He said to him, follow me. And Philip, again, Jesus is recruiting his crew here. Follow me. And Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Keeps going. And so Philip found Nathaniel. I'm just going to call him Nate. Okay, so Philip found Nate. All right, because Philip was recruited by Jesus, so then he goes and finds a Nate. Of course he does, because Jesus just, you know, talked to Philip. And what did Philip do? He told him, "Look, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law. It's happening." The king is here, the Christ is here, Jesus is here. We saw him, we talked to him. He called me and I'm gonna come get you because I want you to come along you know, as well and about whom the, you know, the prophets also wrote and Jesus of Nazareth, I guess what we're talking about, is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. I saw and I want you to come and see and this is what happens with our invitations. A lot of times people say no. A lot of times people push Push back. This is no different. Okay, Nate's going to push back. You know, this is kind of kind of weird story. You know, who who'd you say you ran into? Oh, I just you know I ran into Jesus, and and Nate goes Nazareth. Hold up. I thought we're, I thought we we're talking about the Christ. I thought we we're talking about the Son of God. He he's from Nazareth. I mean, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Really? You know, be like if I got up this morning, I was like, guys, I found Jesus. You know. I want you to come and meet him. He's in Dakono, you know? You, at Niwa, you don't even know where that is, okay? It's just, it's where I'm from, okay? The 80514, you know what I'm talking about? Like, if I came out and I was like, guys, everything's going to change. There's a groundswell that's about to launch, and it's going to be led by a guy that's coming out of Dakono, you know? You Firestone peeps would be like, don't believe it. You know, I don't, I don't. It's a city. I thought it was a town. Anyway, so anyway, you know, be like, no, no, that doesn't make any sense. Hey, you should come and see. Hey, you should come and see. You should come and see. Ah, you know, I got questions. I have concerns. This doesn't make any sense. And Philip takes one right out of the book of Jesus. Already 
taking on his leadership? Because you know what, Phil? Phil doesn't push back and go, you know, I'm telling you, blah, 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 you know. Let's get into an argument. Let me tell you why I'm right and you're wrong. Or, you know what Philip says? Just come and see. And he did. You should just come and see. I know it sounds crazy. You might be right. Maybe nothing good could come out of, you know, Nazareth. I'm just telling you what I saw. I'm just telling you what I heard. <laughs> you, but I believe in it enough that I think that you should just come and see for yourself. And Nate shows up. And of course, when Nate meets Jesus, Jesus changes his life. Because look, look what it says here. so easy. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. Straight out of Nazareth. Didn't see it coming. When my, when my bro Phil came to me and he was telling me I didn't believe him. And I was, you know, I was like, man, nothing could good, you know, good come from Nazareth. But I know now that you are the king of Israel. And when I read John chapter 1 and when I think about the potential that you and I have in the context of the culture in which we live, here's what I think. That simple invitations could lead to significant conversations. You should just come and see is that place really real? Do you guys really believe what you say? You should just come and see. I mean, I could tell you about it, but you should just come and see. And I think one of the best, you know, evangelism strategies that our church could take on for at least a foreseeable future is this, is I think we should invite people to come to Rocky. I think we should invite people to come to Rocky. I think we should be inviting everybody to come to Rocky. Not because, not because you know, this is a good Christian thing and we got to do it, not to guilt you or, you know, or I'm just telling you, if we believe that Jesus changed our life, then, then we should be inviting people to come. Check it out. That's the pitch. You should come and see. We, here, here's a phrase we need to start saying a whole lot. I mean, through your week, every single day, you're bumping into people. I'm not telling you to be weird and creepy, but I'm just telling you, the people in your life that you have influence with who don't know Jesus, you should start saying things like this. You should come sit with me at my church. Hey, what are you up to this weekend? Ah, I'm watching the Broncos game. They're going to lose anyways. Look, you should. Come on. Uh, you know. If you're putting your hope in the Broncos this year, I'm telling you, you're going to be depressed as all get out. But if you come, you know, you should come, you should come to my church. You should come sit with me at my church. You should come sit with me at my church. You should just come sit with me at my church. You should just come sit with me at my church. Now, let me give you the ele- elevator pitch. You should do this, okay? When we're done with this, take a picture of it. I mean, it's the bo- you know, most basic come and see, you know, formula there is, all right? We're not tricking people, we're inviting people, all right? So here's what you do, because we all have this in common, whether if you're a church person or not, all right? If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, you, you should be like, yeah, he's right. He's right. We have all this in common, okay? So here's, here's how these conversations work, okay? You should come sit with me at my church, and here's what you're listening for before you get to that question, okay? Because here's how we all have in common. Life is tough, isn't it? Life is tough. Parents. Is life tough? Young people, is life tough? Over 60 crowd, come on. You woke up this morning, you don't even know why you're hurt. You know what I'm saying? Just like, <laughs> look, come on. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Life is tough. Life is tough. It's tough for Christians, it's tough for people who aren't Christians, it's tough for people who went to church this morning, it's tough for people who didn't. Life is tough. You want to build commonality with people who don't know God? Just sit, say, yeah, I hear you. Life is tough. Hey, how's it going? Oh, man, I just, you know, our marriage is on the rock. Da, 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 or my kid just did that. Or we can't pay the bills. Or my work's going, you know, isn't going great. And you just go, yeah, life is tough. Whew, it's tough for me too. Here's the second thing. And you want to get it right, don't you? We all have this in common. Life is tough. And you want to get it right. In parenting, you want to get it right. In your finances, you want to get it right. At your job, you want to get it right. In your marriage, you want to get it right. Man, life is tough. I hear your life is tough. And you want to get it right, don't you? Here's what I love. Hey, hey, you know, I don't want to be that weird and creepy guy, but, but can I just tell you something? I'm with you. Life is tough, and I want to get it right just like you. And so guess what? Here's what I know about, you know, my church is this. Here's what I love about my church. My church just wants to help. You should come and see. 
you should come sit with me at my church. Man, we have so much in common because life is tough and you want to get it right. You should come sit with me at my church. And friends, do you know what the numbers say? They'll come. They'll come. They'll come to more than just a Christmas Eve service or an Easter service. They'll come next week. And the week after, and the week after, and the week after. And this isn't some, you know, growth strategy so Rocky can be a big church. And, ah, we're a big, no, no. This is about reaching people who don't know God. Who are saying to the church, we would go, but we haven't been invited. And we don't know if we belong. And a simple invitation could change their life forever. And my guess is it would change your life too. Our mission is to know Jesus and love like him. You know what the beauty is of our movement? Is that Jesus showed up a couple thousand years ago and he launched his kingdom. And he invited everybody. Everybody. Come and see. Come and see. I don't know. Just come and see. Well, I don't agree. You should just come and see. Life is tough, isn't it? And you want to get it right, and so do I. See, that's what I love about my church. You should come sit with me. Just see. And just see. And when we do, people will come. And our worship will be better. And our teaching will be better. And we'll love one another better. And we'll serve one another better. Because that is the mission that Jesus launched. For God so loved the world. And he invites everybody to participate in his kingdom. Let's be that church. Let's be that church. So here's the challenge. This week, come on, this week, who are you inviting? Who are you inviting? You don't have to be weird and creepy, but who are you inviting? Who are you inviting? Don't go up and say, yo, they told me I need to invite somebody. Which, no. Be chill. Just go, hey, I've been thinking. Do you go to church anywhere? No, you know, we got some church here. We got some church package. I don't really know what I believe in God. Or last church I went to had snakes. Well, good, 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 because we don't have snakes. You should come sit with me at my church. My pastor just sang karaoke last week. He's so chill. You should just come sit with me at my church. Hey, life is tough, isn't it? Life is so tough. You know what I found that helps? Is that when I attend church and I, I create this space, right? I just open myself up to allow God to speak into me. It helps. And I'm just wondering if it might help you. You should come sit with me at my church. And here's what I promise you. Here's what I promise you, that we will be a church. I, you know, I hope we can all stack hands on this. We will be a church that hopefully when we gather, that we will worship, you know, we'll be, that we will create an environment we are all in. As people that are coming in who know nothing about God, they will watch and see how this community interacts with one another. And I pray that how we talk and how we sing and how we receive teaching and how we walk out of these doors and live out our faith and we give credit to the gospel, I pray that this community live in such a way that when people come and see they'll see Jesus and that's a strategy that I think could change the world let me pray for us Father this morning we thank you for the reminder that we, we, we live in a world filled with people who have so so many questions so many hurts so many concerns and I pray that we we will be a, a community that is rich in relationship. So rich that we would be willing to invite others to come and see. People who know nothing about you, people who have so many questions about who you are, that we know that as a community, we have nothing to hide. We're not trying to be perfect. We don't have it all together. We have good days and bad days. Life is tough. We want to get it right. And the reason why we're gathered here this morning is because of you. So help us to love you and to love others, and especially those who we will invite to come.
wanted to see. And I pray that they might see a glimpse of you. Help us to be that place. Help us to be that church. Help us to be rich in community. We love you. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus. And the church said, amen. We love you guys. Have a good rest of the week. Next Sunday, parenting. Come on, show up. We'll see you then.